How's it going guys? My name is Jose, aka Joe Engineer, and I'm back with another video here to show you how to rebuild the sunroof on your Porsche 911 SC, uh, 1978 to 1983. Um, so if your sunroof is malfunctioning for any reason, if it's stuck open, stuck closed, making weird noises, or you know only one side moves and the other one sticks while you hit the button, um, or otherwise if it's just not functioning properly, uh, follow along and I'll show you how to uh, take it apart, rebuild it, and uh, reinstall it. Um, another thing I wanted to clear up ahead of time is that right now, as of the film, as of the filming of this video, I am not 100% sure what exact years um, this procedure applies to, and that is because of the uh, various configurations of sunroofs um, over the course of the years of 9-11s. Um, I'll explain a little bit more um, with some diagrams as I go on, but if you come across this video and it's been a while since I filmed it, uh, look at the description in the video to find out exactly uh, what years this procedure applies to. But for now, uh, for this, uh, the as of the filming of this video, we're going to say this applies to Porsche 911 SCs, 1978 to 1983. My personal car is a 1983, so um, so yeah, let's get to it. So here's where the confusion stems regarding the application list for the style of sunroof that I have on my 83 SC. First of all, these diagrams came from the Porsche Electronic Parts Catalog um, at the Porsche website. You can literally download a PDF of your entire car and it'll break down exploded views of every single part of the car with part numbers. And I printed these two out because this is a 74 to 77 style sunroof and this this is the 78 to 83 SC style sunroof. The way the sunroof works as if in case you don't know, the sunroof panel rolls back into the roof um, cavity and then at the leading edge a little wind deflector pops up, a spring-loaded wind deflector pops up to um, deflect wind from entering the cabin at, at highway speeds. Now, up at, I believe according to my research, there are two different styles of wind deflectors. This is the one that I have. It's made of three pieces that screw into the roof itself, and then it has three a three-piece wind deflector. The hinge has a, a spring mechanism in it, so the sunroof literally crashes into the deflector flips it closed, and then when it opens, it pops back up again. Now, to my understanding, there is a different style, an updated style of wind deflector, which is a one-piece, and it has these two little kind of uh, spring-loaded arms or kickstands. Uh, I'm not sure if it flips forward or backward, but it uh, essentially does the same thing. When the, the sunroof closes, this uh, it, it causes this deflector to flip closed. Now, the the interesting thing is that I've looked at the electronics parts catalogs for the newer G-Body 911s, and up to 1989, they use this style, the one piece with the little um, kickstands. The earlier cars, um, seven, 74 to 77, uh, use this style, and any of the earlier 911s, long hoods, um, also have this same style of of a wind deflector. Now, the 78 to 83, for some reason, lists both. You can see it lists the early style wind deflector, and it also shows the newer style uh, wind deflector. I'm assuming what's happening here is that maybe 78 to 83 was a transition year where they probably used both site, both types of wind deflectors. Um, uh, within this model range, depending on, you know, the uh, inventory of their parts bin at the time. Um, another, I went ahead and did some more research in other sources, and uh, this book wasn't very much help. It, the procedure to rebuild your sunroof is very general, and I think they kind of shy away from any 
any uh, specific differences, especially because it tells you here applicable years, all coupe years. So they're trying to be as general as possible. And they don't even recognize that distinction. However, the Bentley manual, for, specifically for SCs, 78 to 83, shows in the sunroof rebuild section, it shows a newer style deflector with the kickstands. And it explains in the photos how to service this exact style um, with the newer, um, with the kickstands in it. So, yeah. Um, so to kind of sum it all up, I believe that 78 to 83 may have both styles of sunroof um, deflector, uh, wind deflectors in them. Uh, Feel free to comment um, what year your car is and what style deflector you have and uh, uh, whether or not you believe that it's original to the car or not. But the one that I will be covering is this style, the three piece, which is also the earlier style, 74 to 77. However, I do have reason to believe that my wind deflector and entire sunroof assembly is original to my car. And apart from these the subtle differences in the wind deflector styles, the remainder of the assembly, the mechanism, the cables, the motor, um, is all fairly uh, basically the same. Uh, one big distinction that I wanted to point out is that the sunroof panel has four little plastic uh, ramps that help push the front edge of the sunroof panel over the deflector assembly and mine has this style of, of uh, guides. And I found this out after the fact because I, while I was rebuilding or getting ready to, to do my rebuild, I ordered all the parts ahead of time for 78 to 83 and I bought four of these guides, number 49, which, is, which ends up being used in the newer style deflector. So I had to return these and I had to order a set of these for the earlier style. So that's when I found out that there was, um, you know, some overlap between the uh, styles of of uh, deflectors for 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 this uh, model year range. So that's a quick crash course into 911 sunroofs. I hope it wasn't too confusing. But to sum it all up, we will be repairing the 74 to 77 style uh, sunroof assembly on a 1983 911 which should be correct uh, also based on these diagrams. So here's what my sunroof does. Something, something hangs up on or slips on the driver's side. So the first step in repairing your sunroof is if it's still operational, retract it four inches back. Since my sunroof is not operational, I'm just going to retract it as much as I can to expose this front edge here because I need to get in here and release some clips so that the sunroof panel headliner piece can pop off the bottom of the sunroof panel and you need to access that from the front edge right here. So if you've been successfully able to expose the front edge of the sunroof panel Grab a plastic trim tool with a bit of a kind of a pry bar type of thing going on and pull, release the clips at the front edge of the sunroof, the entire length. Right. Next, push the panel back as far as you can into the headliner. There we go. Till about right there. At the front corners of the sunroof, there are two bolts on each side. 
that secure the sunroof panel to uh, two clips. Remove all four of these bolts. Looks like these come off with a eight millimeter socket. They're really tiny. When you take these two bolts out, this little kind of uh, clip comes out. Very thin sheet metal clip. And then this other clip also comes out. And now you should be able to pop the sunroof panel off. So after you remove the two screws, and clips at the front corners. You want to come back over here to the rear corners and you want to pull off this spring. This is kind of a, a big uh, leaf spring of sorts. You pull this off. Pardon my hand. Remove these two bolts um, and do the same operation on the other side and the panel should lift off. Now one thing I just noticed on my car, my leaf spring is missing. If you look back at the original one, it's held on by a aluminum pop rivet. I'm willing to bet that rivet broke and that little spring is buried in the back corner somewhere. Because nothing there. Yeah, it's MIA. So, yeah, we'll we'll see where it is in a bit. To remove these screws, you're gonna need a little itty bitty seven millimeter socket. And unfortunately, this this wire, the end of this wire, is stuck in the way, so you can't put the socket on there without risking stripping the bolt. So, get yourself a little teeny weeny seven millimeter box wrench to take this out. One step I almost forgot is after you remove the screws back here, slide out these little uh, kind of cable bracket retainers and now the this is the end of the of the um, cables that operate the sunroof but once you slide this little cover out now these are loose and they're not attached to the sunroof anymore. Do the same on both sides and the panel should pop out. The Bentley manual recommends that you tape off the front edge of the sunroof opening on the car to protect the paint. My paint is far from pristine, but I felt like it was pretty solid advice. So go ahead and do that. And then you should be able to pop the panel off very carefully with your hands. After you've released the hardware from all four corners, you should be able to Support the front of the panel from the inside, push up, and you can see how it is coming off. And now it's completely released. And I guess that was the reason why we taped the front um, of the opening so that if this is resting on top of the paint, you're not accidentally scratching it with this sharp metal edge here. So I'm going to put the camera down and lift this off because it's actually surprisingly heavy. Let's do a quick segue here and find out how much our OE factory steel sunroof panel weighs. This is just a panel by itself, not including the, the mechanism and all the other hardware. So I'm just barely holding it with my fingertips. almost 10 pounds 10 pounds of steel hanging up at the top of the highest point on the car so I understand why all the hot rodders take these out and weld the roof shut for weight savings but not us 
we're gonna fix it make it work because I have no AC and I like the Sun look how crusty this whole assembly is this thing here at the front is a wind deflector that as soon as the sunroof opens is supposed to pop up that it's all jammed if I barely put a little bit of finger pressure on it then it pops up to its normal position and then when the sunroof closes it pushes it back down but this is totally jammed up in addition to whatever's going on with the cables so we gotta take this entire assembly out clean it up see what's broken and then put it back together where did that spring go? Hmm. I don't see it I don't know where it went What the? What in the? Okay, so how did the broken spring that was over there travel over here? What the heck? Hmm. Interesting. The sunroof cables are connected to these two, these two brackets. They, they run along the channel going backwards on both sides. But before you can retract the cables to inspect them and uh, for damage and, and whatnot, you need to remove the entire, um, all these brackets in here. The wind deflector and these uh, sliding mechanisms here and they all come out using these Phillips screws on top. This one is attached, so I think this one is, uh, this cable's still intact. But over here, this guy slides around. This cable may be broken, I'm not sure. We'll find out as soon as we disassemble it. After you've removed all the aluminum air deflector and uh, side pieces, take a look at the entire channel and watch out for little things like these guys right here. They are little, um, looks like they're little tiny rubber pads that are placed in very specific locations so that when you have an aluminum piece that screws in here you won't have metal to metal contact and rattling and uh, or um, scratching of the paint so keep in mind of where these little things are so that you can afterwards either replace them or tack them back in place with some rubber cement before you put the aluminum pieces back in to gain access to the sunroof motor the back of the headliner, just before you hit the back window, there is a big long zipper. If you carefully undo the zipper without tearing the headliner, inside there is a bunch of foam sound insulation that is decades old and will probably crumble into dust as soon as you touch it. And there are, um, behind the foam are some panels that are hiding the sunroof motor and the entire sunroof mechanism. So if you remove, if you remove the panels, remove the screws and the panels should come out and then you'll be able to see all the mechanical stuff behind it. Be very careful, again, because the foam is very old and could crumble and land in your eyes or just generally make a mess. Okay, I undid the screws on the driver's side panel and now 
Looks like this panel's released ever so carefully. And let me see if I can grab my flashlight. There we go. There's another panel over here. We'll pull that one out in a bit. But you can see the sunroof motor. And uh, some wiring. And looks like some... Pardon the condition of my headliner. Mine's all torn up. You can see uh, the... What are these? Yeah. Okay, well let's pull out the other panel and see, then assess what exactly we're looking at here. Here's the other panel on the passenger side. They're just little cardboard panels with some um, little clips on the back side and screws along the front edge. Here's what those panels look like out of the car. Here's the driver's side one, passenger side one. This surface faces up into the ceiling, so the foam is on the bottom side. They're just cardboard pieces that, you know, if your sunroof is leaking, they're gonna, like mine was, they're gonna get tweaked and messed up. We'll figure out what to do about replacing these later. To disconnect the sunroof motor, let's start by disconnecting the two wires that are connected to the um, car wiring. L looks like in this case, there's in my car, there's yellow and blue wire going to two black wires. So it's not a bad idea to go ahead and label these, blue and yellow, so that you can rewire it the exact same way, um, just to make sure that there's no issues later on. And then we'll come back and figure out how many screws we need to remove here. Once you've disconnected the motor, come back over here and once you've removed the two screws in this housing here it, it drops down rotates and you can see that the motor is connected to this kind of flexible shaft this gear case and this little drive gear engages into that round orifice there and what look like um, gear teeth right there. As the gear spins it engages in those quote-unquote threads and um, those are actually the sunroof cables. So as this spins around it engages on the grooves or threads of the sunroof cables and moves them along along these tubes and the sunroof cables are push-pull cables meaning kind of like the um, shifter cables or um, the um, or bicycle cables and uh, bicycle brake cables but in the pulling direction only the sunroof cables live in these tubes and move up or down depending on what the sunroof motor drive gear is doing. So once you drop this off, now the motor is disengaged from the sunroof cables and you should be able to um, remove them uh, if needed. As you take the screws out, label their location and bag them because there are several different styles and there's a bunch of them and you want to make sure none of them get lost or or mixed up and on the sunroof components themselves these are mainly um, handmade or hand fitted components so even though technically this right piece 
and left piece should be um, exactly the same. Um, you don't know the history of the car, if it's been in any accidents or, you know, um, because the bodies of the cars are largely handmade, you want to just make sure that you label everything in its original locations just in case there are some slight variations in each in each part so that you can um, make sure and put everything back in its original location and avoid any problems. Remember that the problems that you uncover will vary from car to car. In my case, I went ahead and pulled up on this aluminum channel here and I was able to slide out this uh, this bracket and I realized that the end of the cable is not attached to this. It's supposed to go, the cable is supposed to be inserted in that hole and as you can see it is staked in two locations. You can see the notches there where it was hit with a chisel or something to uh, secure it in place. So the end of the cable is probably buried down in the channel somewhere back inside just for reference here's a new cable same exact side and you can see where the cable is attached to the end right there this one seems to be better quality it has three three stakes on it oh this is having hard trouble having some trouble focusing this has three stakes on it versus the original one that had two. So this is a replacement cable that will be going in here. So on this side, after removing the, the broken sunroof cable bracket, sliding it out from inside this channel, now I can pull this, this whole rail out. On the driver's side, I tried to slide out this bracket, but then it got stuck. And you could barely see in there that the cable is still attached to it. It's way, it's in there, but you could barely see the the threads or um, whatever you call it. It's actually kind of a wire that's coiled around the outside of the cable, but it's along the entire length. And uh, it's stuck in here, however, what you can do now is pull the entire unit out and it should pull the cable along with it. There it is. So I found our little friend, Mr. Right Side Sunroof Cable, buried over here just behind the rear right corner. I can't grab it with my fingers, but I think I can get in there with some uh, needle nose pliers and uh, pull it out. So after you've removed all of the aluminum uh, side trim, the air deflector trim, and the cable channels on either side along with the cables, there is not much else in here to remove. So at this point you can grab the the small headliner panel of the sunroof panel and pull it out and put it in a safe place. After you remove the sunroof panel headliner piece, come into this cavity where the sunroof lives where, when it's retracted between the roof sheet metal and the headliner and clean as much as you can out of here. There's a bunch of dust and debris and just general junk in here. So try to get in here and clean everything out as possible. After you've cleaned out the sunroof cavity as best as possible, come back and clean as much of the surrounding um, sheet metal and the sunroof opening as possible with some degreaser on a paper towel. Just get rid of all the crud that collects all the way around at least as much as you can. You can't go very far in there but do as much as you can. You could even clean under the 
um, edges of the headliner. Sometimes the, in my case, the headliner was starting to curl up a little bit and detach since it's held in by the aluminum pieces anyway. It curled up a little bit, so I cleaned the surface below it um, with degreaser as well, let it dry, and then I went ahead and tacked the um, edges of the headliner back down with um, some uh, fabric adhesive, vinyl fabric adhesive from uh, any auto parts store. And just put a bunch of clamps. Once this dries, then we will be ready to um, replace the sunroof seals. There's one that goes in here, that starts here, goes all the way around, all the way to the other side, to about there. And then there are two more on the sunroof panel itself.